All right, everybody. So today we're gonna kick back off and we're going to do some go enrichment. Before we get into it though, uh, last time we had an error that had shown up for our heat map. And that error was something like plot dot new parentheses, plot margins are, are too large or something like that. And I found that we can fix that by doing plot dot height uh, a fig dot height, so the figure height equals, uh, and then I just put in eight, and then figure width equals 12. And I just pulled that from the margins that we used uh, as, as a variable here in the heat map. And it seems to not throw that error anymore. And that is important if you are interested in knitting. So if we go up here and we can do knit, we can knit to HTML or knit to our PDF. If it's not, of interest to knit and have those um, documents of like a, a report, and then having that error there isn't too big of a deal. It's also really handy too if, like say your global environment is empty and you wanna run everything, uh, you can do up here run, and then you can run all. Uh, with that error, it'll stop at the heat map and it won't actually run these last, I don't know, 10 chunks or so. Uh, or you can click this arrow pointing into a green green rectangle. And what that'll do is it'll run everything that's above a current cell. So if I click this one, it would run all of this and it wouldn't write the CSV. I commented this out just so I don't have, have that table being rewritten every single time. Um, so yeah, now that we have from last time our significant genes, so these are gonna be genes that are um, significant, significantly upregulated or downregulated based on uh, p53 uh, control and then positive for irradiated mice and then uh, just the control mice. Uh, so that's where we get these values. It was we used that interaction term in our results. So we used this guy p53 positive uh, minus and then our treatment uh, irradiated. So let's go ahead and add in our next section. So here we'll do uh, go gene ontology analysis. And these little pound hashtags come in handy in R. If you press this underneath of the, the window deal, if you press the lines, it comes up with all of them and then it's a quick shortcut. So now we have installing our packages, importing counts, uh, gene ontology. I didn't put it, the other ones in there and I probably should have, but uh, it's a good habit to get into. Let's go ahead and copy some of these into here. All right. So now that we have that our, our significant genes computed um, last time between the P53 uh, irradiated and control versus the positive and minus, P53, whether or not it's present or not, um, we can do something that's gene uh, ontology enrichment. And so what is gene ontology? It's basically what category our genes belong to or a more broad term for like a group of genes. We can have a particular protein synthesis or a nucleic acid metabolism, like just a, a more broad term that will encompass more of our symbols or our intrasities. So for those go terms, there's three main categories. And these categories are either cellular component, uh, biological process, and molecular function, like I had mentioned last time. Um, so cellular component is just what it sounds like, the components of a cell, more of the physical. Um, biological processes are it basically boils down to what is required for the cell to live biologically in a biological sense. And then finally we have MF or the molecular function. And this is um, things such as like enzyme or protein functions. So here we would have the name of the gene, which is oftentimes the same as the protein, but these biological, uh, the molecular function go terms are gonna be like what category or what subgroup does that a particular protein function belong to. 
So metabolism of something could be that category. It'll make more sense when we start looking at it. And I'll put a link in the description too that kind of describes a little bit more of um, the gene ontology category. So it'd be the cellular component, molecular function, or biological process. Uh, gives a little bit more detail as to what that is. Um, so first, to get started with this, we need to import two packages that we had installed when we were setting up our R environment, and that is our GoDB. It's hard to see when I highlight. Uh, GoDB and the GoStats. So if you come back down, we can go ahead and import those with library GoDB and library GoStats. And control shift enter will run the whole block and then we have them imported. Uh, the next part that we have to do is um, subset our table that we have above. So here we have our significant, well, we have our calculated significance of our uh, particular genes that we had mapped from our uh, feature counts. But if we do something like um, view as data frame and we want to look at our res table we can open that up but we can go ahead and click p value and we can see some of them are really significant but if we go the other way it doesn't actually subset based on that uh, adjusted p value that we input for dseq2 i think what this is doing is actually uh, or what we input to dseq2 when it gives an output, it's just telling us how many are up and down regulated with a log fold change greater than um, whatever we input. So we need to subset that, and that's pretty easy to do. We can just do res01 for uh, meaning res uh, our results with a p value, adjusted p value of 0 0.1, or uh, we can do 0 0.5, and that's just as data frame like we did down here on the bottom in order to view uh, view that results table and then subset is a really nice function in R and we want what do we want to subset we want to subset our results table and we want to subset it by our p adjust column and we want to make sure that we're getting everything that is less than 0 0.5 go ahead and run that Another thing that we have to set, so the other threshold. Uh, last time I mentioned log fold changes that are common. Some people do two, some people do four. And um, so here we can set our log fold change threshold at say four. Uh, we can do sig LFC, and then later on we can call this instead of typing out. And then it's just harder to make a mistake uh, for the up and the down, if you can set one variable and then just call it. So we'll do, how about four? Great. Now, when we subset our genes based on whether or not they are uh, upregulated or downregulated, we need to assign or we need to pull out the NTRES ID. So the NTRES ID is what the uh, Go Hyper-G test is going to use in order to figure out which category or which term that a particular gene belongs to. So this gets a little bit more convoluted, but it'll, it'll still work. So if we do, we want to select our upregulated genes. So we do genes up equals, and we want to look at unique genes. So we don't want to, okay, so let's look at res05. We have 8877. So we have n row of res05. Okay, but how many of those are unique? We do unique and then res05 dollar sign entres. Um, let's do this. Okay, so we have 7615 unique NTRES IDs for our 8877 um, entries into our significant table. So it's something that we have to uh, consider. We want only the unique ones. 
then we'll look in res05. And then we want to search the table. So we're going to do brackets. And then we're going to type res05 again. We're going to feed it a column. So what column are we actually going to base this off of? Well, we have our two thresholds that we set. We have our p-value, that is our adjusted p-value of 0 0.5. And we're only using that table. So we've already done that thresholding. Next thing that we have to do is we have to look at our log fold change because we set our significant log fold change to four. So we have to go log fold change. And for our upregulated genes, we wanna look at greater than our SIG LFC. And then what do we wanna pull out based on this? Well, we mentioned that we want our, just our NTRES IDs. So NTRES, and there we go. So we look at um, it's going to give me an error, but that's okay. This one. We're going to add a closing. Okay, so our selected genes, we have 288 that are significant. We're at the log fold change of 4 or greater with a p-value of 0 0.5 or smaller. Now we need to do the same thing for our down genes. Enter, and instead of up, we can do less than. Whoops. Down. And here we'll do parentheses and then minus. So we're going to search for. Uh, those that are less than or negative four, so they're significant in the other direction. Here we'll get our 288 back, and then here we have seven. Okay, so we have our up, gene, up regulated genes, we have our down regulated genes. Uh, now we need what the Hyper-G test calls um, universe gene IDs. So we can do that by, well, we already already gave an example of that. Basically, we want all the unique ones here. So if we just copy this, and we'll give it the same name that they use. So universe, gene, I, we'll just go genes equals unique. There we go. So we have the unique intros IDs. Awesome. Now, when we get into setting up the parameters for a Hyper-G test, we have to feed in a cutoff value. So this is gonna be another thing that we can set as a variable and then later on we can call it for our up and down. That way we don't accidentally type in um, one thing for one and something different from the other. We can keep it more consistent. Uh, and here we'll just do a cutoff. And we're gonna set that equal to, uh, let's do capital. Um, set that equal to 0 0.01. So that'll be 1%. Now we have our, um, our genes, uh, we have our universe genes, our cutoff value, uh, we know our goal categories. So we have BP, CC, MF. Um, what else do we need? The org.mm, so that was something that we already called. We can do up params, so let's start making our parameters that we can feed into our Hyper-G test later on. New, we need to define our Hyper-G parameters. So we're gonna use the Hyper-G test. So we have to do Hyper-G params. We need our gene IDs. We need our universe gene IDs. We need the annotation file. So the annotation file is gonna be our org.mm.eg.db. So annotation equals, ah. Then we need our ontology. So our ontology is gonna be um, what we talked about before with the BP. So we wanna look at biological process, molecular function, or cellular component. Uh, that'll go in there. Our p-value cutoff is gonna be what we said above. So cut off, and then, um, Condition, conditional, we'll set equal to false. 
And then uh, test direction, we want to look at over. And we can see all of these, what all of these mean if we you do, um, I think it's hyper G test if we search. And then this guy. We want to look at the parameters for the class. So here we go. Um, P value cutoff that we had, um, test direction over or under. So we want to look at those that are overrepresented. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and start filling this in. Our gene IDs here, we want to look at selected genes that are upregulated. Our universe, that's going to be universe genes. Annotation, that's where we have to do our org.mm.eg.db. Ontology, first let's look at a biological process. Cool. So we have our up parameters. Now we can look at our down. So we'll just change down. And then here, down, um, selected genes down. And I think that is Good, let's run it. Um, select. Oops, I can't spell. There we go. So now we have our parameters. The next thing, since we have our parameters already done, we can pass that right into our Tests. So we can do up BP. So we're gonna look at those that are upregulated in our biological process, and we'll pass that to the hyper G test, which we have on the right hand side there. Up params. And then before we run that, let's type in uh, summary and then up BP. And let's just check out the first the first 10, 10 rows. So control shift enter, we'll get that running. And then we can go ahead and copy this guy, paste it down here, and we'll just change these to a down BP, and then down parameters. And it'll get tied up here because um, it's in the middle of something, so it won't let me run that. But since this is already going, let's go ahead and just kickstart The next one. Oh, there we go. So P53 is involved in um, signaling of, in this case, will be probably DNA damage. It's a tumor suppressor molecule. So when there's DNA damage, it's going to start halting um, the cell cycle stuff. It'll stop uh, cell growth, and sometimes it triggers apoptosis in the cells um, and, and DNA repair. So it, those that have uh, P53 and re-radiated makes sense that we're um, detecting some kind of signal and we're potentially breaking down uh, DNA. So these, this could be, uh, with, without going into the pathway part, these could be part of that uh, digestion and triggering the start of, of some of that apoptosis in the cells. So we have up BP, and then we would expect in down BP some of the things that if P53 wasn't there, um, that would continue happening. So P53 stops cell growth, we would expect to see some of that cell growth. Uh, it stops, um, it, it doesn't have cell death, so, oh, this is too wide. There we, um, there we go. So there's still some signaling happening. Um, nothing stands out. Positive regulation of swell cell uh, proliferation, so growth. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we have up BP. Well, 
Let's copy down BP here. Next one, let's look at cellular component. Up CC, copy this guy. And then uh, in, in order to go to the next thing, now we need to set uh, that category. So up here we set ontology equal to BP. Now we need to set ontology of our up params equal to CC, so cellular component. So if we go ahead and set that, then we can run these other two and we should get the cellular component upregulated uh, in P53. So here we go. Um, periphery cell membrane, extracellular matrix. Nothing really stands out here. Uh, let's go ahead and do down. Got to change this CC. Copy. Run this guy. And we'll give this a copy and we'll do molecular function last. So we have to set this. So here we see um, this is down regulated. So lysosomes um, are higher in the uh, P53 minus. Um, nothing too sticking out too much here. Uh, we have to do molecular function. Do the same for down while that's running. Okay, so here we see some transporters. So PG3 is uh, going to help um, trigger some of that stopping of cell growth. So that could be a uh, an indication of that. Go ahead and run this last one. Down doesn't have as much to work with. It's only seven. On here, looks like there's some receptor that's still growing, a growth factor receptor. Uh, without diving too much into this, that kind of makes sense. The cell keeps wanting to grow. Uh, that wouldn't be present in um, up here where the cell is arresting growth. So that looks like that will be uh, it for today, just because we're already at well, a little over 23 minutes. Uh, and then the uh, uh, pathway analysis, is gonna take a little bit longer as well. So this is probably a good stopping part um, for, for now until we move on Let's run that one again. If you guys find these videos helpful, uh, if you could like and subscribe, then I can kind of gauge on how many people this is actually helping. And if my, my explanations are, are enough to, to kind of walk through some of these processes because they get kind of extensive uh, after a long time. So thanks guys.